This program contains material of a disturbing nature. Viewer discretion is advised. And a few minutes later, the ship's doctor arrives. I told him about her drooling and rocking and her eyes rolling back. And he looked at her charts and saw her fever was a little high. But he has a possible explanation. The doctor said Audrey had febrile seizures. Febrile seizures occur in young children and are usually triggered by common illnesses, such as a cold, the flu, or an ear infection. He gave us a paper on what febrile seizures were, and upon reading it, you know, I did feel a little bit comfortable because some of the symptoms did match up. To rehydrate Audrey, the doctor puts her on a drip. And an hour later, she seems to be improving. I still had my doubts, but there was really no other choice. With Audrey appearing to have recovered, Samantha takes her back to the cabin. And the next morning, the family disembarks the ship in Puerto Rico. While Samantha searches for their luggage, Jerry waits with Audrey. I was walking around trying to find our suitcases, and all of a sudden, I hear my mom screaming. I looked over, and Audrey was projectile vomiting. It was a mother's worst nightmare at that moment. The family rushes Audrey to the nearest hospital. She was very, very pale. Her breathing was even more shallow than normal. A local doctor takes samples of Audrey's blood. And when the results come in, they confirm Samantha's worst fears. He told us that her kidney function was down and her liver took a pretty big blow. Acute liver and kidney failure in children can be a sign of intoxication. And the doctor suspects that there could be something toxic in Audrey's digestive system that is causing her to deteriorate. So he decided to give her an enema to see if it could help, help her go to the bathroom. And a half hour later, Audrey has a bowel movement. When I took her diaper off, it was this thick, tarry, jet black stool and this terrible, terrible smell. And we started looking and we noticed a little red shiny particle in there. The doctor confirms Audrey has ingested a foreign body, but he's unsure if that's what's making her sick. So he takes it for further testing. And a short time later, he comes back with dire news. The doctor said Audrey had abrin toxin poisoning. I have been a nurse for 21 years, but I had never heard of that poison at all. Abrin is one of the deadliest organic toxins known to man. Throughout Audrey's body, the abrin poison slowly suffocates her cells, preventing them from making vital proteins. As Audrey's cells die, her body starts to shut down, triggering her fever, vomiting, and seizures. I don't even know the feelings that I had other than just absolute terror. It was very hard to hear that your child was poisoned. Abram has no known antidote. Within as little as 36 hours, just a trace amount of the toxin can shut down vital organs, including the liver, the spleen, and the kidneys. And depending on the dose, it can result in death. With no cure available, the doctor explains to Samantha what the next few hours will look like. The doctor told us he was going to give her some medicine to take her pain away and just keep her comfortable. Oh. When the doctor tells you he's just going to keep your daughter comfortable so she's not in any pain, you don't feel like you're going to leave a hospital with your child. The pain that my daughter was going through, it was out of my control. Sorry. 
as they wait for any sign of improvement in Audrey's condition. The Gandys are left to reflect on how she contracted Abrin poisoning. Abrin is a natural poison found in the seeds of the rosary pea plant. Now, the seeds are red with a black spot covering one end, and because they're brightly colored, in some cultures they're used to make jewelry. The seed's harmful toxin is encased by a hard outer shell. So ingested whole, they might give you a bit of a stomach ache. But if a seed's casing is compromised, that allows the toxin to enter your digestive system, and that has far worse consequences. Now, Samantha remembers a moment during a stopover in Jamaica. As we were walking into the souvenir shop, this woman put a necklace on Audrey. It was a brown and red necklace. It was a sweet gesture from the person. Then, just a few hours before she fell ill, Audrey was playing with the necklace in the cabin. Audrey was jumping on the bed, and she broke the necklace. She must have put the bead in her mouth and swallowed it. And because the seed Audrey swallowed had a hole drilled through it to make the necklace, the deadly toxin from within the seed seeped out of the hole and into her system. A little over 24 hours after ingesting the seed, Audrey barely clings to life. Having to wait for hours to see if she was getting worse or getting better was just horrible. We were praying that God would just put his healing hands on her and, and help her through this. For the next 10 hours, the family holds vigil. Then, Samantha notices something incredible. I was rubbing her feet, and I looked down at her, and she opened her eyes. And she spoke the first beautiful words I've heard in a long time. She said, Mommy, I'm hungry. My Audrey was back. <laughs> That's probably the happiest time in my life is when we saw the, the light coming back on in Audrey. I started crying at that moment that she was going to be OK. Today, Audrey has made a full recovery. Audrey's back to doing everything that a normal two-year-old does. The Gandys plan on more cruise vacations, but are now careful when souvenir shopping. It's made me a little more cautious of what they hand my child. <laughs>